As many of us are watching the World Cup, let us also remember 23-year-old Tej Narayan Tharu from Nepal. In August 2018, Tej died working on the Alva Kra Stadium being built for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. His mother, Sita, expressed her anguish with these words, and I quote, I'm heartbroken. My son has gone forever. He's never coming back. He has a small daughter. Life is so long and hard. How will she survive? Close quotations. Senators, there are the, those are the heartbreaking words of one mother. Unfortunately, there are thousands of mothers like her of migrant workers in Qatar working for, towards the F World Cup. In 2021, Human Rights Watch found that foreign workers continue to suffer from punitive and illegal wage reductions and faced months of unpaid wages for long hours of grueling work in unsafe conditions with passports confis confiscations, high recruitment fees, and deceptive recruitment practices continuing to be widespread. Qatar has a labor force of more than two million working under these conditions. Even more horrifically, a Guardian investigation last year found that more than 6,500 migrant workers from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka have died in Qatar since it won the right to host the World Cup. Sadly, FIFA continues to be complicit in this tragedy. Instead of condemning the regime, they have written to 32 teams competing at the World Cup and telling them to, and I quote, now focus on the football. Thankfully, certain teams and nations have spoken up. For example, Paris and other French cities are refusing to screen matches in public areas, despite France being the defending champion. Denmark is wearing torn-down shirts in protest, with kid provider Hummel saying, and I quote, does not wish to be visible in a tournament that costs thousands of lives. European football associations from Belgium, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Sweden, and Switzerland have endorsed calls for a compensation fund for migrant workers. As we become engrossed in these games, let's remember victims like Tej and 29-year-old Mohammed Sahid Mia from Bangladesh, who died in one of the numerous highly unsafe accommodations for migrant workers in Qatar as flood water in his room came into contact with exposed electric cable, electrocuting him. So while watching the games, let us not forget the senseless loss of life, the families they have left behind, and the mothers who will never see their boys return home. Thank you, Senators.